another episode of Legion Elite Motorsports. I'm your host, Isaiah. And today, judging by the cover, we have some bad news. So let's dive in and see what's what. So, here she is. Um, basically, story time. So, uh, I was preparing for a race. Um getting everything turned up a little bit, taking it from 14 PSI to 24, which was perfectly fine. Um, I had a little mishap where uh, I replaced it, but this line here actually melted the previous one, not that one there. But that line melted, and I went from 24 pounds of boost, which I had it set to, to 31, which, uh, if you don't know or new to the channel, uh, this car is tuned on a Microtech LT9C computer, and I had it pre-tuned to a maximum of 26 PSI. So, um, when it went above that, there was no tune to kind of, uh, pave the way for safety. So basically I hurt the motor. Yep. Sure did. Um, but I want to say I hurt the motor in a good way. So, um, as of now, there's no rod through the side of the block. There's no, uh, major damage from the visual. But what there is, is detailed signs of what's going on on the inside of the motor. And I'm going to give you guys a sample of what's going on. Okay. Okay, so I am going to start the car. All right, so we're in the on position. to the sound and what's going on over here The car actually still runs perfectly fine. It drives the whole nine, but as you can tell from the breather right there, she was smoking like a chimney. So basically what that means is I hurt the motor in let's say a good way. A way that uh, I don't have to junk the motor and try to find another one and all of that horrible stuff there. Um, it seems that I chewed out my piston rings, which is a lot easier to uh, repair than having to repair a rod shooting through the side of the motor. So. Um, long story short, this motor is going to come out, right? Um, also while we're doing so, uh, because I've been procrastinating about this for quite a bit of time, um, this engine's lasted almost nine years on a stock bottom end 
and used piston rings, which I'm not too sure where they came from, but I found them in a bin already on some pistons and I threw those into this block with um, new main bearings, new rod bearings and a polished crankshaft. So it's all standard stuff, um, only upgrades are the Ajusa head gasket and the ARP head studs. Everything else is 100% original. So, well, minus the exterior items, intake manifold and exhaust manifold and turbo, but um, I assure you everything is uh, factory and you're gonna see that when we rip this engine apart. But since uh, I've been, you know, procrastinating about pulling this engine out. Um, I'm actually going to be able to tend to all of the disgusting, dirty uh, engine bay, including the rat's nest of wiring and all of that stuff. So definitely prepare yourself and get ready for that. Um, today, we're going to take off the exhaust side. I'm going to show you step by step how um, the exhaust side comes off and we'll take it from there. But other items that we're gonna be tending to is going to be the pressure washing and or painting of the engine bay completely. So if I have to rip everything out of here, I definitely will do so. Um, uh, let's see, and I'm thinking about replacing this radiator. It might have some rust in it possibly so that's going to hinder flow and we don't want any of that so we'll just replace this with another one um i'm not going to throw the radiator away it is savable it's cleanable it's fixable but along with the uh fresh well not yet but freshly painted engine bay i would like a new radiator in here also so we're gonna dabble with that <coughs> and also clean up this uh, engine bay of the wiring. Um, actually want to tuck all of the wiring away and kind of get it looking a little bit more presentable to the public, so to speak. Also, what we're going to be tending to is we're going to um, minimize the couplers. So the intercooler couplers, we're going to go from, I think, let me see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We're gonna turn that down to just maybe four. One, two, three, four. So um, we're gonna do that. Also, there's a, been a boost leak on this car since the day before forever due to the fact that uh, the motor mounts um, wasn't able to hold the engine in. So I have a funk lock motor mount on the driver's side and a factory one on the passenger side. And um, it still ended up tapping the pipe on the body and there's a slit on the bottom end of the pipe that I'm gonna show you guys when we get to that. But besides that, we are definitely going to do some repairing to this lip. So we're gonna fix and repair this. We're taking the whole front bumper off. We have the cutout on this car, as you can see. So we're gonna basically clean up the whole front bumper, mend it, repair it, um, get in it looking proper. And um, that's gonna happen also. And this intercooler is so big, at least the measurements that I have it in, that uh, I had to cut some of the frame in order for it to fit. Now I cut the frame, I didn't close the frame off. So there might be some subtle rust starting in that area and we're definitely gonna tackle that. And um, yeah, so that is what we are here for today and we're gonna try to get this done in a couple episodes, but we'll kind of take it from there. So first thing we're gonna do is we are going to 
loosen our feed line. So um, this one takes a 14 millimeter to loosen this guy up right here. So we'll take that off. Then we're gonna take off the boost clamp. Then we're gonna take off the intake filter. Then we're gonna take off the down pipe. Then we're gonna take off the four bolts for the turbo. And then we're gonna start taking a loose the actual manifold to the head. So along with the rebuilt engine that hasn't even begun yet, um, we're going to do a new manifold. This manifold is the first manifold that I've ever uh, put together. And it took me a really long time because I did not have the proper equipment. I'm talking about laying down bubble gum and having to grind it down, then lay down some more bubble gum, didn't like it, grinded it down, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth until um, the manifold was done. So we're going to get rid of this one and we're actually going to put in one of my updated versions. And I'll probably drop a picture right here so you guys can see what the updated version looks like. And then I'm going to show you what the old version looks like. All right, so let's get started. Okay, so we got the intake off, intercooler piping boot off, feed line off. Also, another thing I wanted to tell you guys before uh, I finish taking this turbo off, this turbo, which is a GT35R um, dual ball bearing, Okay, perfectly fine, um, and in 100% working order, I am not going to be using this turbo in this application. I actually plan on upgrading to a bigger size, so uh, once my racing long block is done, all I have to do is button up the same turbo and uh, intake manifold, and then basically going to give it the beans but um i say that to say that um all of this is going to pretty much disappear except possibly the return line so this return line is actually custom um due to the fact that i did not leave room for a return line for um, the turbo when I made this manifold. You see it's poorly built um, and really rough, so on and so forth, but it's been working all of this time with the minimalist of issues, which is great. So what we're gonna do is we're actually going to, um, keep this pipe and we're going to be get ridding, getting rid of the turbo and the manifold. All of that stuff is gonna be replaced with brand new components, okay? So um, with that being said, this is kind of a before and after picture. Um, this is the before and the after will be coming soon. So um, next what we have to do is we're gonna take loose the downpipe the drain line, then we're gonna take off the turbo. After the turbo comes off, we're going to um, unbutton the turbo manifold, okay? So we're gonna knock it out and take it from there. Okay, so the turbo is out. You had an exhaust gasket leak right there, which is fine. Uh, what else? A little bit of staining. Let's see if this turbo's any good. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just put a breath of air through there and see if it spins. Okay, ball bearing turbo. It's gonna be beautiful.
you see what a gentle breath of air does? That means that this turbo will boost, or excuse me, not boost, but uh, spin at any car's, uh, you know, startup and keep spinning. This won't be that type of turbo that sits still and doesn't move until you start boosting something. So just with the breath of, breath of air, she gets moving. So that is a good turbo. And we're actually gonna use this turbo for another project um, that you guys might be familiar with. Um, let me take you over here so you can take a peek. Yes, sanded down the valve cover, but that turbo is going right here. Perfect application is going to turn out beautiful and make lots of power. So stay tuned for that. But getting back to the star gown, and I don't know if you noticed, but on this turbo, it's oil and water cooled. And I've never run water on this turbo ever okay and i'm talking about five hour trips sitting in rush hour traffic the whole nine never ever ran water on this turbo and she performs better than any turbo i've ever used so she's definitely going to stay uh, with me but on the mirage project but anyway anti-surge I'm gonna clean it up a little bit make it look a little bit more decent then plumb it up to the manifold and she should be good to go okay here she is she is out um, I've had quite an awesome time with this manifold but it is time to put her to rest, off to bigger and better things. So, farewell. Moving on. So, this is the engine bay without anything on it. Now, I just want to show you guys, just to kind of give you an idea of how the new manifold is going to look and the fitment and it's available to you guys each manifold is made to order it will be completed within two weeks if you choose to order it contact me visa instagram or facebook and um yeah let's take a look at what the turbo manifold looks like this is the newest version um let's call it version 2.0, uh, is going to face the turbo forward so we can get straight to business. And um, the manifold that I have for mock-up is actually stainless steel. Um, I noticed the manifold didn't like the heat that's applied to it from this uh, engine for some reason. So I've gone with mild steel. I've had the greatest success with mild steel. So we're going to go that route until, um, you know, I get some better materials. Now, the more expensive the material, of course, the more expensive the manifold. But let's take a look at it. Okay, so this is the new location of the manifold I have it in with one screw and basically your downpipe is going to go in between just like so you have room to put it further back you could put it closer to your preference really but um, I think I'm going to stand mine upwards so it'll be and probably at like a 70 degree like right around here a little bit so um 
the turbo is going to sit like right over this way so it'll be a slight curve and then down but anyway um the specs are schedule 40 material throughout um we got a 44 millimeter wastegate so you can get really accurate boost without boost creep and yeah plenty of room Everything looks good. Down pipe, plenty of room. Alrighty. And basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna have our new turbo on there. Um, we're gonna redo the intake depending on how everything fits um we're gonna weld up the pipes and so on and so forth uh we're gonna dive into that a little bit later but this is pretty much where she's gonna sit i'm gonna adjust the wastegate just a tad i'm definitely keeping my air conditioning so i'm gonna be mindful of this line with any modification but I think I have enough room to sit the wastegate up, which would be ideal so you can adjust your boost um, without having to um, reach down and take off the spring, take off the manifold, all of that. So this is just to give you an idea what it's going to be. You have the option of T3 or T4. So turbo choice is really up to you. You can go small with a internal wastegate and then you get the blocker plate for the 44 millimeter and put the C-clamp on there and boost away. Or you can go external with the 44 and good to go. So lots of options and this is the route we're going to go. And with that being said, I will definitely see you guys next episode where we will be pulling the intake manifold apart and seeing everything that's attached to it and label the injectors. So I will see you next episode.